you know, great managers make the right decisions, right? Uh, our culture is suffused with examples of, you know, uh, prescient people who made great decisions. They knew the stock market was going to tank. They could see it coming. They knew exactly what the customer wanted, so they rolled out this fantastic project. Uh, you have stories and legends of people with great judgment who make the right decision. And this is something uh, that a lot of managers believe, so that makes them careful. Okay, what is the right decision in this situation? What should I do? The demyth, right? So that seems to make sense. So what would be the opposite of this? And the demyth is that great managers know there is no right decision, right? Again, there are right answers in 2 plus 2. You know, there's a right answer, wrong answer. What's the capital of India? There's a right answer, wrong answer. But decisions like, okay, you know, I've got, a, I've got one of my subordinates who's not performing, right? Now, what do I do? Should I sack him? Should I give him a warning? Should I coach him? Should I give him more responsibility? Should I find him a role that matches his work? Should I move him closer to his hometown? Clearly, the answer is not clear over here. It's not as simple as what is 2 plus 2. It's not clear, but I'm going to go further. It's not just that it's not clear what the right answer is. There is no right answer. Let me try and explain why, right? See, if you make a decision and you get the result you're looking for, you make a decision, you get the result you're looking for, does that mean you made the right decision? Not necessarily. You see, you don't know if the other decision that you could have made might have had an even better result. And if you make a decision and you do not get the result you want, you know, it's a disaster. Does that mean you made the wrong decision? No, not necessarily, because the other decision might have been even worse. And you can never really know that. The only way you can isolate you know, the impact of that specific decision is you have one universe, you make one decision, you have another parallel universe, you make the other decision, everything else is the same, and then you see which one works out better. Only then can you say which one was better, which one was worse. But that option is never available to you. So the only thing that is really available to you is not what is the right decision, it's what is my decision. You know, what are the principles and priorities and the values and, you know, things on the basis of which I'm going to make the decision. I don't know what's going to happen. You never will, right? But a lot of people start really um, obsessing about it. Now, there are two problems that happen when you think there is a right decision. Right? Managers face two problems when they think there is one right decision. You see, if you think there is a right decision, and I know what the right decision is, then what happens is you stop listening to other people. You become arrogant, you become overconfident, you make hasty decisions because there is a right decision, and I know what it is. Right? That's one management problem that people have. The other one is there is a right decision, and I don't know what it is. And quite often when people start their careers, they think, well, I, I can't say it, I might say something wrong, I'm not sure what the right answer is. They become tentative, they become confused, they become paralyzed because there is a right answer and I don't know what it is. They can't even say, this is what I feel, this is what I think, you know, this is what I'm going to do because what is the right answer, I don't know, right? And so you can either become overconfident or you can paralyze. And now one of the things that happens also if you think there's one right decision is you get filled with regret. Because you look back at decisions you made in the past and say, I should have done something different. As if there was a right thing to do and I did not do it, so I did something wrong, so I'm filled with regret. But you see, if you saw me looking at a video of myself, learning to walk as a baby. So there's baby Kanishk and he's learning to walk and he's falling and he's getting up and he's falling. And I'm looking at that baby and oh, you stupid baby. What a moron, you keep falling. What a moron that baby is, right? If you looked at me, you go, okay, Kanish, you've clearly lost your mind. But you see, a lot of us do that when we say, I should have done that. Anytime you say, I should have, you're basically doing the same thing as abusing that baby version of yourself because you're saying that the learning that I got from that experience, I should have had before the experience that led to that learning. That's impossible. And yet, every time you say, I should have, that's what you're implying you should have. You know, you, you never make the wrong decision in the past because you make the best choice available to you given what you know at that time, given your life experience. And if you keep looking back and saying, oh, you know, I made that wrong decision, I should have done this, I should have done this, I should have done this, then when you're making a decision today, well, how can you trust yourself? Because like, I made so many wrong decisions, how can I know if this one is gonna be right? And so another way of saying, you know, I didn't make any wrong decisions, I made the decisions at that time that I felt were best given what I knew, and I can do the same thing now, right? I'll make a decision and you know, it'll work or it won't work and I'll look at the result and I'll learn from that and I'll keep going. But if I say that there was a right decision, you're going to actually lose your confidence and be filled with regret, right? Now, let me give you an example of somebody who really understood this, right? It's uh, Gujarat, so let's talk about Gandhi. You know, he's one of my heroes. And when he was doing what he was doing at the time of the independence struggle, there were a lot of people who had opinions about what he was doing. 
the British will say he's an emotional blackmailer, you know, all this fasting and stuff. It's not the way you do business. He's going to see our queen and dress like this, etc. There will be some Hindus who will say he's against us. He's appeasing, appeasing the Muslims. There'll be some Muslims who will say he's against us. He's not giving us a separate state. There'll be some Dalits who will say he's against us. He's not burning the Manusmriti like Ambedkar. There'll be capitalists who will say he's against us because he's thinking all this Khadi, Vadi, you know, no big industries. That's not what's good for India. There'll be some nationalists who will say, yeah, the Dharna, Varna, nothing is going to happen. You need guns and stuff to get rid of the British. His wife is saying, you're making me clean the toilet. His son says, you love everybody except me. Becomes an alcoholic. Everybody has got a point of view about what he's doing. Now, if he tries to please every single stakeholder, get everybody to agree with his decision that everybody says it's right, what's going to happen? Right. Nothing. Nothing. So he's got to make a decision saying, okay, you know, I understand all the different perspectives. I understand not, not everybody is going to say this is the right thing to do and make a decision based on my values, my priorities. And I don't know what's going to happen. I listen, I hear, and then I make a decision. We'll see what happens, right? Now today also, if you look at the political leaders, you know, whether you're a fan of Mr. Modi or Rahul Gandhi or Kejriwal, you know, whoever you admire, somebody is out there criticizing every single thing about them. Face, family, education, policies, the way they speak, everything about them will be criticized. And the only way you can avoid people saying, no, you did something wrong, the only way you can avoid that is be invisible, right? Even if you don't do something, people will say he's not doing anything. So only by being insignificant, irrelevant, invisible, are you going to avoid being judged, right? So rather than say, okay, what is the right answer and live in a space of paralysis and confusion, you know, you can make a decision. See, the thing about the word decide, right? The word Latin word side, it means to kill, right? So genocide, homicide, you know, suicide, etc. All means to kill something. When you decide something, what you're really saying is I kill all the other options and I pick one. Right? And people don't want to decide because they're afraid, if I pick one and I kill all the other options, what happens if this decision is not the right one? And so you have a choice, either take the risk of you know, succeeding or failing, etc., or you remain in confusion. Right? You remain in confusion. And another word for confusion is basically saying, I refuse to make a decision.